Good afternoon, and welcome to the Wednesday afternoon conference call with Trusts Unlimited. This is Jim George speaking. I'm the non-attorney spokesman and facilitator for Trusts Unlimited, and I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to listen to this call, particularly those of you calling in for the first time and those that will be listening to the replay over the next 24 to 48 hours. We like to move quickly through these calls bottom line the information for you we know you're busy people you have other things to do we do have a standard format we like to spend a few minutes talking about the situation as it evolves in Iraq as we continue to believe that the Iraqi dinar is the base currency for the potential reset of some of these other currencies a few minutes talking about the program we put in place to assist you and then we go to a brief Q&A so let's go ahead and get started and talk a little bit about what's going on in Iraq. First, by way of disclaimer, Trusts Unlimited is not the purveyor of the dinar and these other currencies. We're not advocating either the sale or purchase of these currencies, but as rather substantial currency holders ourselves, we're sharing with you the information that we think is relevant. And of course, the most relevant piece of information for those of us holding the dinar and some of these other currencies is a window, window for the potential reset of the uh, Iraqi dinar. And uh, after looking at the situation that is, exists there, we have a pretty wide berth here. We're looking at a potential reinstitution of the dinar based on two scenarios, either in the next 40 to 60 days or as a backstop, the worst scenario as we speak today would be January of 21, 2021. But for reasons that I'll explain, technical reasons, it could happen anytime uh, in between. So let's start and talk about what's going on in Iraq. The situation is so complicated, and there's so much going on on so many different levels. I could be on the call for two hours. I don't want to do that, and I know you don't want to listen to it, so I'm going to bottom line the information to you that, that I think is most important. Let me just touch on the CBI first. Unlike previous situations where we were close to a potential reinstitution of the dinar, it's the CBI whose work has been completed. What's basically holding up the CBI are the corrupt politicians and, of course, the auctions which continue. Formation of the new government has been the primary stumbling block, and uh, the government's been playing musical chairs with the various nominees for the uh, office of the prime minister. We began with Alawi, we then went to Mahdi, we then went to Al Zarfi. Currently, we're dealing with Al Kazemi. Now, the parliament is scheduled for a vote on Al Kazemi's cabinet. And he has been in negotiation with all of the factions and has amended his cabinet positions. But having done that, I still am of the belief that passage of his cabinet and the formation of the new government next week is very doubtful. Now, President Salih of the House does have some options. One of them, and the one that I think will probably take place, is that he will renominate Alawi, who does have the support of the Sadrists and some soft support with the Shia. If that, in fact, happens, that means we went from Alawi to Mahdi to Al-Zarfi to Al-Kazemi and then back to Alawi. Now, there is a second option, and it's kind of draconian, but what Salih could do was he himself, and this is pursuant, I believe, to Article 81 of their Constitution, the president of the House, Salih, could assume the office of prime minister, designate, and dissolve the House until the elections again in September. Now, again, that would be a pretty draconian move. I don't know whether he would be willing to do that. But that brought up an interesting question for me, and that is if they actually dissolve the House until re-elections in September, what's the status of the members of the House. Are they technically no longer members of the House? Or if they are, would they then have lost their immunity until September and be subject to the accountability and justice law? If that were in fact the case, 
if it were in fact the case that they would lose their uh, immunity and I were Salee, I would use that as leverage and say, look, if you don't get a Lowy through or someone through next week and I dissolve the House, you guys are in jeopardy. So maybe that's a possibility. I'm trying to think of ways that this can get done. Now, why do I think that the reinstitution can still happen in 2020 and possibly within the 45 to 60 days? Well, there is the possibility that al Kazemi and his cabinet could be approved. There is the possibility that if they're denied, he will quickly bring Alawi in and uh, he could be approved, which would get us within that 45 to 60 days. And in as much as the CBI has completed its work, uh, everything would be in place for the reinstitution of the currency. The other reason is that the House has decided that the budget will be approved incrementally, meaning that they will do an initial budget which will carry them from January through May, and then they'll go to the one twelfth protocol, meaning essentially month to month. So if that's in fact the case, and if the budget has to be redone because of the precipitous drop in the price of oil anyway, then it would seem reasonable that they could also reinstate the currency at the point that they'd be rewriting that budget for that short term. But there still remain substantial complications in Iraq. We still have corrupt pro-Iranian officials. We still have the auctions. We have the Iranian militias that are running around in Iraq, and now they're threatening to attack U.S. installations. In my opinion, that would be a mistake. I've said it in the past, and I, and I hope that it happens, but Iraq, excuse me, Iran has been using Iraq as a, uh, as a piggy bank for probably decades at this point, and they're pilfering up to $40 billion a year from Iraq. They have five major oil fields in Iran, each producing approximately $60 billion a year. If the Iranian militias continue to attack, however uh, weak these attacks might be on U.S. installations, I'd really like to see the United States take out one of those oil fields. You don't want to wipe the country out because then at that point they have nothing to lose. But taking out one oil field negates the $40 billion a year that they would be getting from Iraq, and hopefully they would uh, see the light. Uh, the other issue is that Iran is really pushing to reopen the borders between Iran and Iraq. Of course, that's rife with more corruption. Uh, and also, and again, this is just my opinion, and this is because I have such a low opinion of the Iranian mullahs and their intentions, but it would not surprise me at all that part of their intention to reopen the border is so they could, to the best of their ability, infect the Iraqi people with the uh, coronavirus, which is devastating Iran. In addition, the drop in uh, oil prices has created massive budgetary holes for the Iraqis, which is another problem. And all of these things combined have resulted in the at least temporary devaluation of the Iraqi dinar. Now, I know that's disheartening for many, but this devaluation is based on all of these issues which can be resolved. If you are like-minded, as I am, that uh, we're going to get through this and the, uh, uh, the Iraqis will eventually reinstate their dinar, either in the next window of 45 to 60 days or even if it's pushed out to January 2021, then the temporary devaluation of the Iraqi dinar it's just an opportunity to buy more dinar. Uh, so that's the situation as it exists right now. I know it's not what you want to hear. But again, 45 to 60 days, best scenario. January 21st, worst case scenario, that's eight months out. Many of us have had dinar for over a decade, so eight months represents approximately 8% of the time that we've already been holding the currency. So it's not the end of the world. Before we get into the program we've put in place to assist you, I would like to touch on the IMF call that I was afforded an opportunity to listen to last week. It was the reason that I had to jump out of last week's calls. <clears throat> and I just want to touch very briefly 
on some of the things they discussed. One of the things they discussed was their concern about the coronavirus, how it's affected the globe, and particularly how the Trump administration has responded, i.e., by nationalizing the Federal Reserve and taking control of the central bank. Now, this is of concern to the IMF because the largest reserve currency held by the central banks worldwide is the U.S. dollar. So whatever the Trump administration does that has an effect on the Federal Reserve, uh, control of the U.S. central bank and the U.S. dollar has a direct effect on the central banks around the world. Uh, Second is uh, the IMF did discuss loans for countries that are struggling with CV-19 or the economic vacuum that it's created. Now, that hasn't directly affected Iraq, but it has indirectly affected Iraq, most notably the reduction in the price of oil. So Iraq would be on a list of nations that would be eligible for additional loans to the IMF. The IMF has a vested interest in seeing the sovereignty uh, of Iraq uh, and the growth of their economy simply because the IMF, the United States, has back guaranteed loans for Iraq. There are a lot of countries that uh, basically are the debt holders for Iraq, and uh, they want to make sure that those loans are eventually repaid, and that's not going to happen unless Iraq emerges uh, from what's going on right now. The last thing I'll mention is, and this is, again, my personal opinion, some of these loans I would refer to as austerity loans, meaning that the loans don't uh, – the loans prohibit the country from going under, but they're extremely difficult to maintain. A good example is what's going on in the EU. Austerity loans were basically given to Greece, to Italy, to Spain, to Portugal, to Ireland. These countries were in trouble, and they're really strapped with the payments. And if you recall, the IMF in a number of cases had um, had backed off on uh, the deadlines for payments repeatedly. In one instance, unfortunately, the IMF went into the bank accounts of uh, Cypriot citizens in order to Uh, recover uh, back payments, and they literally confiscated funds from individuals. And I touch on this in the calls about the uh, G20 bank bail-in provisions. Uh, They've already occurred in the EU. Uh, In addition, in the EU, there is a daily limit as to how much actual cash you can pull out of the bank. Now, as an example, if you have a million dollars, or excuse me, a million euros in an EU bank, you can write checks, you can use your ATM and all of that, but if you want to actually withdraw cash, you're limited to 1,000 euros, irrespective of how much money you have in the account. So these austerity loans are kind of a two-edged sword, uh, and hopefully Iraq won't find itself in a position where it's going to have to be wholly dependent uh, on the short term for, with loans from the IMF. But again, basically, that's where we are. Now, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an optimist, and I'm hopeful that either the uh, cabinet of uh, uh, Kazemi will be uh, approved, or if not, they'll bring Alawi in, and Alawi could move swiftly and get us to that 45 to 60 day window for the reinstitution of the dinar. But lastly, and I'll just conclude with this, I do not believe that the international community will allow Iraq to fall into failed nation status, even if that means the United States military with coalition forces is going to have to go in there and clean up the mess. That being the case, Trusts Unlimited has put a program in place to assist you It's a two-phased program. Phase one is pre-RV. Phase two is Mm post-RV. Pre-RV involves the establishment of a package of pre-RV asset protection trusts with the assignment of your dinar and other pre-valued currencies to that trust product. Post-RV involves all of the products, services, and professional referrals that will be made available to you after the reinstitution and revaluation of the dinar and some of these other currencies. 
So let's start with phase one, which is the establishment of your package of pre-RV asset protection trusts. Again, with the assignment of your currencies on paper to that trust product. Now there is a very compelling reason, actually there's a number of reasons why Trusts Unlimited has established a package of irrevocable trusts, which are in our opinion the best bulletproof asset protection available domestically. Now there are a number of entities one can establish to provide some level of asset protection. For example, individuals can establish LLCs and sub-S corporations, and they do provide some asset protection, primarily by dividing business assets from personal assets. The problem here is the possession of the dinar and these other currencies are personal assets, not business assets. In addition, courts have ruled that LLCs and sub-S corporations owned in the majority by one person or a small group can be pierced for civil litigation. So the LLC and the sub-S corporation are not going to provide the asset protection you're going to need in order to protect this newfound wealth. Some individuals have established revocable or living trusts, and those entities can exempt your estate from the cost and delay of probate and can substantially reduce and in some cases eliminate the federal estate tax. But the revocable or living trust provides no privacy or asset protection, so they will be inappropriate for your needs. Some individuals have established single irrevocable trusts, and that does provide substantially more asset protection. However, there is an inherent flaw in a single irrevocable trust. And that is that any asset held within that trust is involved in civil litigation that would necessarily bring all of your other assets and net worth into that litigation because they are all owned by that same individual entity. The solution is to establish a package of irrevocable trusts which will protect you on a pre-RV and a post-RV uh, uh, status, but the package must be established prior to the revaluation of the dinar and these other currencies for a number of reasons. First, by establishing this package of trusts, you will preserve your privacy and your anonymity. That's because assets held within our trust package are sealed, meaning that the general public will have no knowledge of your net worth or your actual holdings. <clears throat> Second, by establishing this trust package, you will be able to successfully avoid personal IRS scrutiny. If you are holding these currencies in direct title when they revalue, the IRS computers will most likely spit out an audit. And with the potential magnitude of this revaluation relative to your prior year's earnings, you're probably looking at a full-blown six-year audit. Such an audit would be time-consuming. It would certainly be frustrating because it's come along at the precise time that these currencies have revalued and there's much more important things you'd rather be doing. But the cost of a six-year audit would probably be more than the cost of our asset protection trust. On the other hand, if your pre-RV trust package is in place and you have assigned those pre-RV currencies to the trust, you will have successfully transferred the taxable event of this revaluation from yourself personally to the trust. Now, this is important for several reasons. First, there's less than a 10% chance of an IRS audit if this taxable event were to occur within a sophisticated trust package like ours. And second, and most importantly, even if the IRS determines to audit your trust, they can't do a six-year audit. Why? Because the only taxable event within the trust will be the revaluation itself. The third reason you'd want to establish this trust package is if you plan on gifting currencies to family and friends in certain situations. Philanthropic gifting can always be done on a tax-preferred basis, either pre- or post-RV. 
But in order to avoid a substantial 40% federal gift tax, you're going to need to give currencies to family and friends prior to the revaluation. Now, if you're gifting to individuals that you have no problem giving them the currency to exchange for themselves or giving them the USD lump sum after you've negotiated the exchange, that can be accomplished outside of a trust with a standard gift letter. But if you are hesitant for any reason to give these individuals the post RV lump sum, you can gift to them through a special gift subtrust that we've established as part of our package. And by gifting through this subtrust, their U.S. dollars will be protected along with yours. The language of this subtrust will allow you to gift up to a certain amount of a currency or currencies, meaning you can gift to these individuals the exact U.S. dollar amount that you had in mind, irrespective of the exchange rate. And again, because this money is being gifted through this special gift subtrust, you will be able to manage, invest, and distribute the money to these individuals as you deem appropriate. The fourth reason you'd want to establish this trust package is because it's been structured in such a way as to allow your state to bypass the cost and delay of probate and the federal estate tax. I'll give you two quick scenarios. Scenario number one, you purchase 5 million dinar for $5,000. The day after that, those currencies revalue for $25 million. The day after that, you pass away, leaving your heirs in a state of $25 million. Now that estate must go through probate, a process that ordinarily can take anywhere from six to 18 months. But probate is a public disclosure process meaning that the general public will be aware of the size of your estate, who your heirs are, and how much each stands to inherit. So if anyone feels they have a legitimate claim against you, your estate, or your heirs, they can simply file that claim with a probate court. And that could tie the estate up for years, and in some cases even decades. And your heirs will have either limited access or no access at all to their respective inheritance until the probate process is completed. <clears throat> then there's something called the federal estate tax. This is the tax that the federal government would assess in order for your estate to be transferred to your heirs. Under current law, approximately $10 million of that $25 million estate would bypass any federal estate tax, but the balance could be taxed as much as 55%. Now, this scenario is not only unacceptable, it's completely and totally avoidable. Scenario number two, you purchase 5 million dinar for $5,000. The day after that, you assign those currencies on paper to our asset protection trust package. The day after that, those currencies revalue for $25 million. The day after that, you pass away, leaving your heirs that very same estate of $25 million, but this time protected in our asset protection trust package. As a result, there will be no probate. There will be no public disclosure of your estate. Your heirs will have immediate access to their respective inheritance, and the federal estate tax will be zero saving your heirs as much as 55% of their inheritance. The fifth reason you'd want to establish this pre-RV trust package is for some very specific asset protection benefits. One pre-RV, one post-RV. Pre-RV, this trust package will allow you to circumvent something called the Uniform Fraudulent Transfer Act. What does that mean? Under our system of civil procedure, you can only be sued for what you actually own in title or the value of property at the time you transfer it out of title to an entity like our trust package. So let's take the previous example from above. You purchase five million dinar for $5,000, assign the currencies to our trust, they subsequently revalue for $25 million. 
you begin to live a lifestyle more reflective of your newfound wealth. And a couple of years down the road, someone sees that you're living rather comfortably and decides for whatever reason that they're going to sue you. Well, this prospective plaintiff has a couple of problems. First, he or she better have a very strong case and very deep pockets because this trust has been structured in such a way as to make it extremely expensive and extremely time-consuming to pursue civil litigation. But second and most importantly, once any prospective plaintiff learns that pursuant to the Uniform Fraudulent Transfer Act, the only thing they could ever win by way of a civil award would be $5,000, the value of the currencies at the time you transfer them out of title and to our trust, and none of the post-RV value of $25 million, there will be no lawsuit. Post-RV, there's a benefit I like to refer to as limited liability stop loss. This protects you from future bad acts after you have acquired this wealth. This protection is accomplished through a legal strategy referred to as segregation of assets. This is why we have established a package of trusts, and this is how it would work. Once again, we'll use the same example. You purchase 5 million dinar for $5,000, transfer the currencies to our trust. They subsequently revalue for 25 million. And now that you have 25 million in trust, you decide to make some purchases. So you purchase a larger primary residence, a vacation home, perhaps a half a dozen rental properties for tax write-off and additional cash flow, a couple of cars, a boat, and let's say an RV. But as you purchase these items, you place each of them in their own separate subtrust to be managed by your master trust, the initial trust you establish to hold your pre-RV currencies. Now, how does this protect you from uh, potential litigation in the future? Well, let's say one day you're driving one of your new cars, you have an accident, the accident is clearly your fault, and tragically someone is seriously injured or even killed. Well, the family of the victim is going to want to sue you. But remember, civil suits are about monetary awards, and you don't legally own anything. So the plaintiffs would be left to sue the owner of the car that you were driving. Well, who owns that car? One of your subtrusts, of which you are merely the beneficiary. And what's in that subtrust? Merely that one car and the car insurance policy. In that scenario, the car insurance carrier will negotiate an out-of-court settlement with the victim's family, and you will not be involved in those rather unpleasant negotiations. The car insurance carrier will repair or replace your car making you whole, and this is important, all of your other assets and net worth are safely protected in the other subtrusts. Why? Because under the law, those separate subtrusts are separate legal entities or persons having nothing whatsoever to do with the accident, and the plaintiffs would have no standing to pursue those separate legal entities or persons. So your package of trusts work very much the way a commercial barge would work, where all of the valuable cargo is stored in a series of small compartments. Why? In the event that any compartment is ever breached, the only potential loss would be the cargo in that one compartment. The cargo in the other compartments is safe and secure due to the firewalls, and the barge will never sink. Now, these benefits are lost to you if you do not establish your package of irrevocable trusts prior to the revaluation of the dinar and these other currencies. Now, there is one other benefit, and it's this. If you are, in fact, the holder of one of our pre-RV asset protection trust packages, then you will be eligible to participate in Phase 2. All of the products, services, and professional referrals, that will be made available to you. Of the many, I will just make mention of one here today. Trusts Unlimited will be sponsoring a post-RV seminar to be held in Disney World, Florida, approximately 30 days after the revaluation of the Iraqi dinar. 
Present at that seminar will, of course, be the staff of Trusts Unlimited to assist you with the management and funding of your trust packages. Many of our clients have expressed the desire to establish scholarship funds, foundational trusts, special needs trusts, charitable remainder trusts, and even the more complicated 501c3 nonprofit and offshore trusts. And the proper way to fund those entities is with the direct transfer of funds from your asset protection trust to those newly formed entities. We'll also have our tax specialists there. After you've acquired this newfound wealth, you're going to need and want services of sophisticated tax specialists to help you minimize your tax liabilities in the future. We'll also have our independent fee-based wealth managers there as well. And you're going to want to reposition assets after the revaluation for a number of reasons. First, we know statistically that 95% of all windfalls, however large and from whatever source, are lost within three to five years due to inexperience, mismanagement, and fraud. We also know that under the new G20 bank bail-in provisions, the failure of banks in the future will no longer be made whole through initially the general taxing authority of the respective governments, but first and foremost by the confiscation of funds at the accounts at those banks. So you're going to want to get money out of the banks and work in other markets. And lastly, we know the general global shift, which has already begun from fiat-based to Basel III compliant commodity-backed currencies in and of itself, is going to create extremely volatile financial markets, and you're going to want a substantial amount of your net worth in tangible assets to avoid that volatility. Now, our trust package is initially a package of 10 trusts, consisting of one master trust that will hold your assigned currencies pre-RV and financial assets like bank accounts and investment accounts post-RV, one optional gift subtrust if you wish to gift currencies to family and friends and manage that money post-RV, which subtrust at any time can be converted to a standard subtrust, and then eight additional standard subtrusts which will hold physical assets uh, like uh, homes, cars, boats, etc. Now, this was the simplification of a rather sophisticated trust package that we've utilized in the past for our more affluent clients, a package that had an initial cost of anywhere from six to $10,000. But nearly a decade ago, when we decided that we were going to work with denarians, being currency holders ourselves, we knew that this price tag was going to be unaffordable for too many. So by basically simplifying the package, we've reduced the cost to $3,000. Now, there are several ways you can pay for that. If you pay us up front, we'll discount the price further to $2,500, saving you an additional $500. That's not possible. We do have a deferred payment arrangement. You'd make an initial payment of $525, which some would basically offset our out-of-pocket costs just to produce and deliver your trust to you. The balance of the $3,000 would then be paid in $100 monthly installments. We will charge no interest. The only proviso is once the revaluation of the Iraqi dinar happens, any unpaid balance would need to be paid within 30 days, which is certainly a very reasonable arrangement. With the deferred arrangement approach, anyone that has currencies and understands the need for getting their affairs in order and their trust in place pre-RV should be in a position to afford to do so. One other suggestion. We do accept credit cards. Pay us up front with a credit card. Not only will you get the $500 discount, but the minimum payment on your card would be substantially less than the 100 a month you would pay under our deferred payment arrangement. And, of course, you could pay off that card in any fashion that you wished. But we will work with you in whatever method works best for you. Our uh, intention is to help you get your affairs in order and your trust in place for all of the reasons that I've discussed here this afternoon. <clears throat> Now, we will be going to a Q&A uh, in just a moment, uh, uh, but before we do, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Trusts Unlimited and uh, why you may want to series consider contacting us and getting our initial no-obligation package. Our trust package was authored by our attorney, Robert Bly. 
He's been a practicing attorney for over 40 years, specializing in the areas of estate planning, asset protection, and offshore planning. I myself hold degrees in political science, macroeconomics, and finance. I've worked in these areas for over 38 years, inclusive of uh, international currency arbitrages. I, along with my clients, were personally involved in the reinstatement of the Kuwaiti dinar in the early 90s. So between the two of us, Robert Bly and I have over 78 years' experience working precisely in these very specific areas, and I frankly know of no firm that can make that claim. Now, Bob and I have actually been working together for a decade in the areas of estate planning, asset protection, and offshore planning, and it has been disheartening from time to time to see people walk away from sound estate planning and trust creation because of the mistaken belief that by doing so, they have somehow lost control of their affairs and their assets. In point of fact, under our system of civil litigation, it's when you hold assets in direct title that you can lose control of them or lose them outright. If you've lived for any length of time, you've either experienced in your own life or through friends and family situations where you have lost control of your assets and your affairs. Things like unexpected divorce, permanent incapacitation, the onset of dementia, premature death and prolonged and complicated probate processes. Then there are investment losses, business losses, and even bankruptcies. The number two loss of wealth now in the aggregate courtesy of the information age, is identity theft. But the number one loss of personal wealth remains, confiscation through civil litigation. Anything you own in direct title can be taken from you. So in point of fact, the only way that you can manage, protect, and control everything at all times and in all circumstances is through the establishment of a package of irrevocable trusts, and particularly if you have an asset like these currencies, that you're anticipating a substantial increase in value. And we at Trust Unlimited will do everything we can to help you accomplish your personal and financial objectives, both pre- and post-RV, as we understand them. So again, thanks for listening to the call. We are going to a Q&A in just a moment. I strongly suggest that if the things we've discussed here are uh, of interest to you, you have a pen and paper ready. I will give you our contact information. You can get our initial no-obligation package. It has a lot of information about us, about trusts, about the revaluation. You can review the package. Contact us by phone or email if you have any questions. We'll be happy to assist you in every way, and there will be no consultation fee. So I'm going to go ahead and open the Q&A now. Two quick rules on the Q&A. Uh, we do not take service calls. We reserve the Q&A for individuals interested in our trust package. And second, for obvious reasons, your name and number must be on the screen in order to participate uh, in the Q&A. But I'd like to give you our contact information. You can go to our website, which is trusts with an S, unlimited LLC.com. Our email address is trusts with an S, unlimited LLC at gmail.com. Our phone service is 307 274 4122. If you'd like to listen to a recent conference call playback, or if you'd be kind enough to refer us to someone that might be interested in our services, you can either go to YouTube and then go to Trusts Unlimited, or you can go to IQD Calls and go to Trusts Unlimited, or you can simply dial the same number that you dialed for this live call this afternoon with the exception of the last digit. Rather than dialing four, you'll dial a three and then use the same access code, which is 739-394-POUND. If you'd like to be included on our email list, you can go to our website, go to the bottom, enter your name and email address where indicated. 
You should be on our email list within 24 hours. Bear in mind that we only send emails out very periodically pre-RV, but after the reinstitution of the Iraqi dinar, emails may go out as often as weekly. So let's go to our Q&A here. Our first caller is area code 916. That's 916. Go ahead. Hi, Jim. I'm wondering, uh, since Disney World is closed now, uh, should the um, RV happen and Disney World is still closed, have you thought of an alternate uh, venue? Yes. Yes. Can you, uh, can you share that? If, if, well, I'm going well, to explain to you what we, our plans are. If, in fact... Disney World is closed, or if, in fact, there are still rigorous travel guidelines, and many of our clients are uh, older individuals, we will either find another site or we will do the uh, presentation in our offices with a DVD and then put that DVD up on our uh, website so that individuals wouldn't even have to travel. Uh, as a matter of fact, it made us make the determination that we would probably, even if we go to Disney, uh, do a DVD and put it on our website because there still are individuals uh, absent the coronavirus situation that still, for health reasons, can't travel. So we will be doing the seminar either in person in Disney or through a DVD. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Bye-bye. Okay. Our next caller is area code 347. That's 347. Go ahead. Yes, this is Kevin from New York. Now, um, currently the DNR market rate is outside the 2% compliance window of, with the IMF. Would, that, would this delay the RV? Yes, yes. They're going to have to close that window. Now, also, there was a time frame. It had to be closed with a certain amount of time. Uh, I think that if they can get within the 2%, uh, they're going to be all right. Now, let's say hypothetically that the CBI's work is concluded, the new government is in place, some of the other issues have been resolved, and that's the only outstanding issue. I think, they, I think the IMF will waive the time frame. Uh, but even if they don't, the currency will reinstitute in country. So, uh, But you're right, that is an issue that has to be dealt with, and I think it will be dealt with r relatively swiftly. Oh, okay. uh, no, because I think um, I heard about that like two weeks ago, and I think they they dragged their feet in changing it. So that's in changing it to the. I know they didn't want to change it because that reflects it's outside of two percent window. But I think I think the last currency auction or so is was like I maybe not the last one, but I think one or two weeks ago, I think when I was hearing that it was outside compliance, but I think yeah. they were dragged their feet in changing it. It is outside of compliance, and it meanders around. But remember, if you can get out of compliance quickly, it means you can go back into compliance quickly. And remember, a lot of that spread has to do with the corrupt officials who are skimming. So uh, I think that will be dealt with, uh, again, rather quickly. And uh, the U remember, the U.S. Treasury, along with the Finance Committee, is overseeing the, uh, the CBI operations as well as um, some of the import uh, regulations that were in place. So I really do think if everything else gets done, uh, that's going to be resolved, or there's going to or there's going to be a serious problem. That, that that's not that, that's not going to hold this thing up. They're going to take care of that. No, no. What I mean, I, I assume that it will be out of, because I think the coronavirus and uh, and the oil prices. I'm assuming that had an impact on that. I assume. I, I, I'm sure all of that does. That's why, in what I said earlier, I said the complexity there and all of the problems that they're facing. But, but I'll just repeat myself one more time. If everything else gets resolved, that 2% spread's not going to be a problem. They'll fix that, like, overnight. Okay, one more thing. How about a body? Uh, why can't a uh, – does a body – let's say if they selected a body, uh, will you have to think? I think, a, I think a body's done is a potential for the prime minister to designate, but a body does still have some pull with the parliament and, and some of the, uh, the sex. So I think a body – uh, I think a body can be helpful. Let me put it that way. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, our next caller is area code 312. That's 312. Got to be less. 
Hey, hey. How's it going, Jim? Pretty good. Pretty good. Yourself? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Question. It's an old question, but it's regarding old news. So how did that fly do on the wall last week with that meeting? You were the fly on the uh, wall. They had that meeting, remember? Yeah, yeah. Well, I discussed it in the opening. I missed it. I missed it. Oh, man. Well, I was in a bad area, and it went up and down. I can do the replay. Well, all you do is listen to the re- uh, It's only the t- 10 or 15 minutes. It was near the end of the, uh, the fr- phase one, you know. Uh, okay. But just to give it to you briefly, their concerns were uh, the United States uh, – uh, the Trump administration nationalizing the Fed and the central bank, the effect on the global central banks, um, because their number one reserve currency is the U.S. dollar, and then the austerity loans to countries inclusive of Iraq. So, you know, you can review that. That's basically the bottom line of what, what came out of the meeting. Uh, of course, I wasn't permitted to speak. Uh, I, w- I was only, per- you know, accorded an opportunity to listen, and I'm fine with that. Uh, you know, of course. there's nothing I can teach them, so, um, and certainly nothing they want to hear. So, so uh, that was, the, that was the, the, the substance of what went on. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that's all I got for now, other than, oh, if they do have a, 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 an election or a meeting or a vote on Sunday or this week or early next week, did you talk about that in your opening? Yeah, but basically, if they if if they kick Kazemi to the curb, I think President Salih has had it, and I basically explained his options: either putting a lolly in there and saying, "If you don't approve this guy post haste, pursuant to Article 81 of the Constitution, I will dissolve the Parliament until elections in September, and I will operate as the Prime Minister designate." They don't want that. So hopefully either uh, Kazemi or Alawi uh, will okay. get the nod. And they'll, all, they'll all hold their nose and jump the same, jump off the cliff the same time. <laughs> all right. That's all I got, man. Thanks for taking yes, my sir. call. Take care. Sure. Have a good day. Say hi to the professor. Will all do. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that was our last call for this afternoon. Again, I'd like to thank all of you for listening to the call. The things we discussed are of interest, and you are a holder of dinar and some of these other currencies. I strongly suggest you contact us to get our initial no-obligation package. You'll learn a lot just by reading through it. If you should decide to proceed and establish a trust package, everything you need is included in the package, and we are certainly uh, prepared and happy to answer any questions that you may have, uh, and there will be no consultation fee. Our next call is scheduled for next uh, Wednesday as usual. Certainly, if something of a really dramatic nature were to happen between now and then, we'll try to get out an emergency email and schedule an emergency conference call. But failing that, we'll be back next Wednesday, uh, noon Eastern, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great week.